Hi guys, welcome back to the next video in our series on RabbitMQ. In the last video, we wrote our first basic program using RabbitMQ, where we published and consumed a simple message. Before we move on and look at more complicated examples, we are going to take a quick detour and look at RabbitMQ's relationship with the Advanced Message Queuing Protocol, or AMQP. While knowledge of AMQP is not essential for using RabbitMQ, a decent grounding in it is often useful when trying to understand some of Rabbit's concepts or debugging tricky issues. So feel free to skip this video if you're not interested in learning about AMQP and how it relates to RabbitMQ. We can see here on the AMQP website that AMQP is an open standard for passing messages between applications or organizations. And RabbitMQ is not the only message broker that uses AMQP. Many other brokers, including Apache ActiveMQ and Azure Service Bus, make use of AMQP. AMQP uses a remote procedure call pattern to allow one computer, for example the client, to execute programs or methods on another computer, say the broker. This communication is two-way and both the broker and the client can use RPC to run programs or call methods on each other. In a similar way to object-oriented languages you might be familiar with, RabbitMQ uses commands which consist of classes and methods to communicate between clients and the broker. For example, we might send an exchange declare command that tells the broker we want to create a new exchange. In this example, the exchange is the class and declare is the method. When a command is sent to or from a RabbitMQ broker, all the data required to execute the command is included in a data structure called a frame. Frames have a standard structure and we will go through each of the frame types in this video, talk about what their purpose is and what type of data they contain. The four frame types defined by AMQP are the method frame, the content header frame, the body frame and the heartbeat frame. Each frame follows a common structure. Every frame starts with a byte that represents the frame type that is being sent. In this case, the number one says that this AMQP frame is a method frame. This is followed by two bytes, which represent the channel that the frame is being sent on. In this case, we can see we are sending the frame on channel 12. Next, we have four bytes that represent the size of the message. Sending the size of the message like this allows us to determine how big the message will be before we have to process it. Next becomes the frame specific content, which we will talk about in turn for each frame. Finally, we have a byte representing that the frame has ended. The size of the message excludes the frame end byte. Using the frame end byte in conjunction with the size allows us to verify the frame specific content and make sure it is accurate and nothing has been corrupted. The AMQP protocol defines exactly what should be contained in each byte of a frame. For example, here we can see that the frame type should always be the very first or the zeroth byte of our frame. Channel should always take up the first and second bytes and size should take up the third, fourth, fifth and sixth bytes. The frame specific content should run between the seventh byte and the size defined and seven, while the frame end is always the last byte which is size plus eight. First, we will look at the specifics of a method frame. The method frame is what has the class and method that we discussed earlier. Like a core frame, the frame specific content for a method frame follows a very strict structure. The first thing in the frame specific content of a method frame is a number of bytes representing the class in question. In this case, we can see that the bytes are 40, which represents the exchange class. Next, we have a number of bytes that represent the method. In this case, the number 10, which represents the declare method on the exchange class. So the method we are calling here is exchange declare. The docs for the AMQP specification give us a full rundown of which IDs are for which methods, as well as a short description of what each method is expected to do. We can see here that for connection, the class ID is 10 and the various different methods for that class include start, which is also method ID 10, open method ID 40. And we can see there's a ton of other different 
methods and classes defined by the AMQP specification. After the class and method IDs, we need to send a number of arguments specific for that method. The arguments we have to send are again defined in the AMQP specification. Looking at the specification for the method in question, exchange declare, we can see the number of different arguments that we are expected to send as part of this method. Each argument has a parameter name and then a value and has to be passed in a specific order. In the case of exchange.declare, we can see that there are nine different arguments passed with various different values and carrying various different meanings. Some of these are reserved, but other ones contain data around the type of exchange, what the exchange name is, and whether it's a durable exchange. The AMQP specification contains full details on how to process all of these arguments and how they should be formatted. For example, long strings have a 32 bit representing their length at the front, followed by zero or more bytes of data. The specification also gives details around how other different types, such as timestamps and field tables, can be created and processed. These arguments make up the remainder of an AMQP method frame. When sending or receiving a message through RabbitMQ, the first frame always sent or received is a method frame, which has a method that corresponds to sending or receiving a message. For instance, if we want to send a message to a RabbitMQ broker, we will first send the method frame basic publish or equivalent. After we send this method frame, it has to be preceded by a content header frame. This carries the message properties and tells RabbitMQ how big the message body is and how many body frames will precede it. Similar to a method frame, a content frame is broken up into several different sections, each with a predefined purpose and length in the AMQP specification. 